Hey, good day, everybody. Philadelphia, unfortunately, got hit by a double whammy by the Flyers' crap show of a 9 nothing loss. And then a good start by our Philadelphia 76ers in the first half that then turned into a 109-105 to loss to the Milwaukee Bucks, unfortunately. Um, this is going to be a quick reaction to that, as well as some suggestions on things that I think the Sixers could look for at the trade deadline. I also gave suggestions about the Sixers with the video with Andrew from yesterday. Please check that out. And if you're a Flyers fan, I'm just with the Flyers, the video of Mike and Steel Flyers from a few days back, please go back and check that out as all that's still very relevant as well. But last night against the Bucks, the Sixers got going. They got churning in the first half. It was making me excited because the Flyers sucked the entire game. So I was getting my morale up. The Sixers were doing that in the first half. They were looking good, churning in the right direction, even without Joel. Like I said, in past videos, they finally got going without Joel in, in uh, my uh, Sports Fanatic newscast that I did with Steel Flyers the other day that's on his channel and I'm going to be posting on my channel later tonight since we space out the share to get it flowing and sharing stuff with both channels. And also please subscribe here trying to get to 125 by the end of next week at 119 at right now. But this was a disappointing game. We got hit by a double whammy. We were stopping Giannis well in the first half. But by the end of the night, he was able to capitalize on 35 points and 15 rebounds. Uh, DiVincenzo, who I was a guy that I feared, was able to, by the end of the night, get 20 and 8. So um, th both of those guys really became a big staple focal point. Uh, Middleton, we did shut down. He only scored 15, but then Drew Holiday was able to score 19. So they were able to just get contributions from guys going into the second half. This is something I fear, but the Sixers were able to pull ahead. I was hoping they were able to keep that lead because what Andrew and I were talking about, we feared, was the Bucks did not play the night prior. The Sixers did. We thought that would um, get into them and get going and really get them, uh, obviously hit them in a negative effect in the second half. And that's exactly what the hell happened. The problem is, when you have that good of a lead, you should be able to keep it going. You should be able to stay aggressive. Ben Simmons fell flat on his face in the second half in this game. And Rui did nothing. Danny Green had a great first half. Rui didn't provide much in the second half. Dwight was good throughout the game. Shaka hit over his average. He averages almost 14. He hit 15 points. Uh, Ferk didn't do... Uh, he was trying to do more, but was more impressive again uh, earlier on. And then Seth Curry only dropped 10 points. Um, so I think in this game... And then Tobias um, played 43 minutes and started better um, than, than the finish. So... Everybody in this game started better than the finish, which was to be expected because you played a game before, but the Bucks did not. But being able to grasp that lead, playing exactly how Andrew and I were talking about in the video in the first half, you have to be able to, with this team, with the Tony Bradleys of the world, the Dwight Howards of the world, you have Ben Simmons, who's good on defense, to or Tony Green. Danny Green is really a D and three guy at this point. He's primarily defense and then still makes three pointers at about a league average clip. And Shake is a guy that's obviously aggressive there and sometimes gets steals. He's not good at defense necessarily, but can, with his athleticism, can get steals. And Matisse Thibel, <coughs> excuse me, is top five in the league in steals. So you got to be able to defend a lead with this roster structure, especially when uh, you have that big of a lead. The Sixers, just for some reason, when they start to get tired, sometimes just start shooting shots that become questionable, especially when Joe Embiid's not in. They start getting less aggressive when they should continue to go at the team when they have the advantage and they also have the lane when they then just take a dumbfounding shot. That's what started happening in the second half. They got stuck in their own heads. They started going, okay, we have a good lead. Let's get over um, conservative here at times. And then that came back to bite them in the end. You, you can't do that, but the big thing with them is they're 8-2 and two in their last 10, so I'm not going to trip over it that hard. I'm just going to go into the things that I think, because this Bucks team is one of their biggest competitors, especially because the Bucks are 10th in defensive efficiency. The Sixers are second, while being uh, pretty good in offensive efficiency as well. So I think um, when you look at the Sixers team stats, uh, we're 13th in offensive rating and second in defense, uh, where when you look at the Milwaukee Bucks. They are uh, fifth in offensive rating and now ninth in defense after yesterday's game. So I think this is a bigger competitor where the um, Brooklyn Nets all the way down 23rd and a historic offense where if the Sixers can actually start to defend better, especially when Embiid is in, they obviously defend well and Dwight defends well. Bradley was less than impressive yesterday but has been good in other games. So I think you can defend well with this team 
It's just you have to keep that spunk, even if you played the night before. How you played in the first half to how poorly you played in the second half to not be able to keep the lead, especially guys like Ben Simmons. And uh, Harris still played solid because he got overplayed. He played up to 44 or 45 minutes almost. Uh, that's not what you want to... You want to be able to put other guys in like Danny Green, like Thibault, who wasn't hitting his shots as much yesterday. Ferk, who wasn't hitting them as much in the second half. Seth was struggling. So that really had to overtax Tobias. But So I'm not going to trip on him in that game. I think he got overtaxed because of guys not performing in the second half whatsoever. Uh, so I think uh, he ended up being the guy that got overused, like we've seen from Joel in the past. But I think that goes to show this team, with the way Shake's scoring more all around, and is below average, only a bit above 30% from three. Danny Green's right at league average and trending downward, other than when he played the Spurs and had a great game. Uh, the other evening, and then started good in this game, and then just fell off very quickly. You need a guy that's more of a steady shooter. I know JJ hasn't been looking sexy in New Orleans, but I feel like he's an energy guy. I mentioned this in the video with Andrew. I think if he comes to a team that's a contender again, he will really get going and really be able to shoot off the bench. I think he can bring that fire and spunk to us that we potentially need. Uh, with this Sixers team to be able to really get our shooting going. Uh, Larry Nance is a guy that could also be somebody because he can slide from the four position to the three position. If you need him to play that, he can also shoot a bit and obviously play solid defense. He's a guy, P.J. Tucker, who could end up getting cut, so it could be an easy guy to pick up, is a guy that could definitely replace Mike Scott and be a little bit of a different capacity like Andrew brought up on the video uh, yesterday. And I think that's definitely a guy that we could look out for as well. In my opinion, um, obviously Kyle Lowry has been rumored. He's not is what what he once was defensively and on offense, but he still averages over 18. Does a very good job on both ends, even at the age of 34. That would allow Simmons to then be a little bit at the four where he can use that hook shot that actually, in my opinion, looks solid. And maybe you can get him being more aggressive going up against some of those guys because you'll have to be to score at that position with Lowry facilitating the offense rather than being able to drive and just kind of go in on people. He would have to use that hook shot and kind of get more aggressive. Uh, Will Barden is another guy, um, a good athletic player that can shoot the ball obviously a good bit and then also can play a good athletic defense on the defensive end. Um, those are just a couple of guys. Uh, obviously there's other guys that you could potentially go out there and get like there's always been got people wanted to bring back um, the Corvus of the world. I'm just a big proponent for um, getting someone, I think obviously we brought up on the thing, this could be a pipe dream, but they're not doing that good down there. Uh, maybe you could bring in Josh Hart, who is a good guy that competes at a high level on defense, obviously from the local area, College of Villanova. Uh, can also has the potential, like Tucker does, that's only 6'7", to maybe slide between the 3-4 with the way he competes on defense and can hit the 3 in the future, just like P.J. Tucker uh, is able to do in the latter part of his career now, where Hart is still ascending and not even in his prime yet. So that could be a half-decent uh, pickup, in my opinion, as well, along with Kyle Lowry. Uh, Norman Baeka has also been mentioned, uh, I've seen as well. He can shoot the ball a good bit, so that would be good. Uh, my prioritizing people would be, obviously, first and foremost, if you could get Kyle Lowry, that would be really good because I think he can help facilitate the offense. He plays good defense. He's another added defender. I think if you had someone like him that brings 18 more points to the table with Joel and beat out, uh, you wouldn't see the aggression and you would probably get um, as a veteran, be able to kind of get Simmons' head out of his ass at times as well and help with that. Um, I think that would go a long way. I think Hart would really have helped in a game like yesterday because he's a guy that can hit a couple of those clutch shots and then you're really back in business. J.J. would have helped, but I feel like J.J., even though as much as I love him, is third or fourth on my list just because he doesn't help on the defensive end. And that's how we faltered yesterday. We played a game the night before, then we weren't able to defend their lead in the second half, and then we couldn't make key shots. So, yes, we need to get guys that can shoot, but I would rather get the hearts of the world that can play good on both ends. Kyle Lowry, who can shoot the ball uh, very solid still, but also plays good defense. And then, um, excuse me, um, you also have, like we said, the Larry Nance of the world who can shoot it from the four and plays good defense. And then they're not going to trade him, but if you could ever get a pipe dream trade out of the Blazers, he just came back. Obviously, I think if you trade with the Blazers, obviously getting Damian Lillard would be great, but getting C.J. McCollum, I think, just because of the way this team needs a guard that can do it on both ends, would fit into the Sixers the best. So that would be a pipe dream one, but if you're able to pull that off somehow and pull a rabbit out of a hat, 
that would be the pipe dream trade that would really solve a lot of the Sixers' problems because McCollum can hit shots, he can defend his position very well, and that's something the Sixers really need. Hart is a version of a, a mini version of that that can play. Also, the two maybe become the Tucker type that can sometimes play the small four for you. I mean, hell, we have Thibel playing in a small lineup down low. So I think you'll definitely be able to get that out of how Hart competes on defense. So those would be the guys I would look to. So this has just been a quick reaction of the Sixers' loss against the Bucks, and then a look into who I think we could end up getting on the roster. And we also talked about that with Andrew in the video yesterday, so please check that out if you would be so kind. Um, the Sixers' next game is Saturday at 8 p.m. versus the Sacramento King. Uh, the Kings right now are 16-24. and 24. Uh, The Sixers are going to be 28-13 and 13 coming into that game. So definitely looking forward to watching them against the Kings and try to really pounce on those Kings and bounce back after a disappointing loss to the Milwaukee Bucks. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Go Philadelphia 76ers basketball. Let's bounce back and pounce on those Kings that are struggling mightily this year. Maybe we could go out and get a shooter from him, <clears throat> Buddy Yield, from them as well, our team that we could potentially go for. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like I said at the beginning, please like, comment, and subscribe. Trying to hit 125 by next week. This has been Sports Fan News for Professor Joe. Please have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Peace out, everybody.